Hey there fellas, this is your chap Dre Davasti and I made a portrait of His Holiness Pope Emeritus Leo XIII. Before we begin, uh, I would like to announce that we already have an official website thanks to the software Wix.com and I would like to give credits for supporting and teaching me about how to make a website to my teacher, Ma Maria Madera. The website contains all the works which I really afforded in forming at its finest. The horror that I really endured software breakdowns due to extensive editing but it was really worth it. You can explore from my art portfolio of works, blogs, which entail information about my works and my bio as an artist in order for us to stay more connected in our relation as my dearly subscribers. Moreover, if you really need to privately contact me for any inquiries related to artwork, my artworks, and if you desire to securely acquire commissions, you can inquire down by messaging me via scrolling down below on the homepage or cl clicking the contact button on the menu. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tap the notification bell for updates. Kindly also support my social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, the style of the art is akin to the medieval inspired manuscript painting I made last time. Um, if you want to know more information regarding about the work, uh, you may refer to my blog by checking down the link below in the description box. Starting. I first made a base of coffee to make the tint of the paper look more classic and for the better flow of my watercolor paint. Then I added the watercolor and Reeves gouache base of some sort of Prussian ultramarine blue and with some crimson by mixing violet and orange red. Um, given the fact that he lived through the period of the industrial age, wherein color pencils were invented, they were a modern invention during those times. In lieu of adding smaller details using color, watercolor and gouache, and also for convenience reasons, I decided to use color pencils and it is logical to do so in order to emphasize his historical period. LOL! <laughs> I then added some skin tone with uh, base. Uh, I I mean I, I then added some skin tone base on the faces of Leo the Thirteenth and Aquinas, which is kind of dull. For I decide desire to achieve a more classical tone in the faces of the work. Frankly, I never used watercolor for the cherub angels or at least the puto like angels and other small details, for they require attention in detail which I use color pencil instead. For the metallics, I use some gold and silver Prisma color pencils and gold ink for the bigger parts, although it seems that the gold ink or pen has bad flow of ink so I really needed to pull out the nib to just impose the gold details especially on the cope to achieve that nostalgic manuscript illumination. All these were used from the frame, triregnum, cope, Stole and the Sun of St. Thomas Aquinas. The frame in violet uh, contains depictions of Saints Peter and Paul with intricate details like the Jewish cross, which is kind of the oriental style. I really made the frame kind of oriental style because it has like repetitive patterns. Anyway, I also added symbols within the four corners based on the legacy of the Seb Pope which I will expound later on here. And we're done! Some brief information about our daily portrait of today, uh, Pope Leo XIII, also known more or more or known as Vincenzo Gioacchino Raffaele Luigi Pecci, 
is notorious for being one of the longest reigning popes and for being quite a very old age when he reigned as pope. He was also very staunch in promoting the intellectualism in Catholic teachings, especially in terms of theology, by pioneering in Catholic education, adapting the church in reputation and prosperity to the eyes of the modern world. With this, he upheld the philosophy of Thomism, which is the philosophy of my devoted saint, Aquinas, for it is known to promoting faith with logical reason, especially on the existence of God and other prevailing reasons regarding the truth of this realm of the universe. He promoted Thomism via his paper or encyclical of Eterni Patris or Eternal Father in Latin. With that, he really promoted science and research by inviting experts to act access in the Vatican archives and improving the Vatican observatory, fighting the rights of laborers during the time of the industrial age. He was not blind in such related issues by creating the encyclical Rerum Novarum, calling out the humanizing conditions to the point of the death of laborers. He called out that laborers need fair wage and must be treated fairly while affirming the right of property and free market. By faith, he was staunch in promoting the hyperdulia devotion to Mary, creating 11 encyclicals about the Rosary, thus earning himself as the Rosary Pope, approved two Marian scapulars and embracing her title as the Bediatrix. Politically, the Papal States existed since it was offered by Charlemagne as a gift to the Pope for the Pope's personal protection and due to the incompetence of the Byzant Byzantine Empire. But by Leo XIII's reign, he was the first Pope to never hold it anymore. At present, he is currently entombed at St. John Lateran in Rome, years after he died given that he had a firm interest to the place. Uh, personally, given his steadfast contributions, I really don't know why he is still not canonized in the church for he nourished it in goodness, especially intellectually. Maybe he is underappreciated or not really minded by the Vatican or by canon lawyers due to many candidates for the sainthood. Hopefully someday he can be a saint that I may intercede since checking his life may be actually odd. And that's my 10 cents. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tap the notification bell for updates. And they also support my social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching and Godspeed!